All right, what's up? Welcome in, everybody. GC Live Wednesday episode. West Mitchell, Chris Clark coming at you with plenty to talk about today. Nothing bigger than the commitment of Cam Scott this morning to the Gamecocks as South Carolina lands the number one, the consensus number one prospect in the state of South Carolina for men's basketball from right down the road in Lexington, South Carolina. Of course, we're going to get into what that pickup means for the Gamecocks and, of course, going to be joined as we teased by Jamie Shaw from On3, who's going to give us a little bit more big picture thoughts on what that can mean for the Gamecocks and who uh, Scott is as a player. First, though, we are presented, as always, by Clint Hammond of Movement Mortgage, clinthammond.com, 803-771-6933. If you're in the market to buy a home, Clint is your mortgage guy anywhere in the state of South Carolina and actually in some states beyond. Also, huge Gamecock, huge supporter of our show. The uh, show would not be possible without Clint's support. So all we ask is that if you are in the market or in the need for some of his services, to give him a shot to earn your business. Again, ClintHammond.com if you want more information. Uh, what a day for the Gamecocks. We'll go ahead. We'll bring Jamie Shaw in right now. I see him waiting. Jamie, uh, welcome into the show, man. I hope you're doing well. Appreciate you making the time. And... um I'll just uh, I'll let you kind of just take it whatever direction you want here to start. But I guess the big picture question for me to you is just how did we get here in terms of back in August, the commitment and, of course, then signing with Texas and now uh, to where we are today with um, with um, Cam Scott committing to the Gamecocks? Well, Wes, uh, first off, thank you all very much for uh, having me on. It's a uh... You know, I think it's a myriad of things that happened um, all together um, that came to, um, you know, obviously it starts with the season that South Carolina had this year, what Lamont Paris was able to put together, uh, making an NCAA tournament run. Um, I think you have a little bit of what Gigi Jackson is doing in the league. Um, you have Gigi, Colin Murray, Boyles, and Cam, all three year after year after year, the best players from the state of South Carolina, all having success, um, you know, at, at the university. Um, you also had some family things going on with him um, that wanted him to be closer to home um, w with his family um, health wise and everything uh, that wanted him to be playing closer to home to be able to easier to get the games and stuff. Um, but yeah, o overall it, it was a myriad of things that continued to go right um, in South Carolina's direction. And it culminated with him committing this morning uh, to the university of South Carolina. Jamie, give us a sense of just I – know, I know you know Cam's game very well, so let's just start there on the floor. What is South Carolina getting in terms of the type of player, the strengths, and then the upside that he is going to bring to the program? Well, currently he's number uh, – he's a top 35 player for on three. Uh, he's a lengthy and athletic prospect. You have the makings. You have to build the frame. Um, of something that could really grow into a, a good prospect. He's somebody who has produced at every level um, already to this point, be it club basketball um, on the EYBL circuit, be it with high school, two-time Gatorade State Player of the Year, 2,400 career points, uh, all-time leading scorer at Lexington High School um, and all that. So he's con had continued success uh, as he has a frame that you can grow into that continues to have high upside with a high basketball IQ. Jamie, um, I, I had the chance to to talk to Cam and, and interview him uh, about the commitment. And you know, we I personally don't cover basketball like day to day like you do. Um, but but really, just uh, for the fans who haven't heard him speak or or talked to him before, just really enjoyed talking to the kid. He's got a very just vibrant personality, good communicator. Um, obviously, seemed very excited about about this decision, but. Um, I was also kind of told, and I, after hearing this and then talking to him, I kind of see what this person was saying, that he does have a little bit of a flair for the dramatic on the court in terms of just he he's willing to be the guy. He's willing to have the spotlight on him. He's willing to to want the basketball in some key moments. Um, what do you think that could mean for a, for a South Carolina program that obviously is still building and looking for guys who are willing to kind of be uh, the guy that can help take them to the next level? Yeah, so I, I guess uh, to the first part, you know, I've known Cam since he was in sixth or seventh grade um, and, and watching him grow and continue um, to, to turn into what he is. He's, he's a very, very charming, very um, electric almost kid uh, when it comes to personality, when it comes to speaking in the day of NIL, um, all this type of stuff. He should be somebody that really, um, you know, has, a, has his hand in that and 
uh, does a good job with NIL. You know, he, he's the type of person that people want to be around and people want to, you know, be a part of um, as well. Uh, when it comes to the game, um, yeah, he has no problem being an alpha, but he also has no problem fitting in and helping things run well. Um, he's a very good teammate. You know, at the Lexington High School, he showed 2,400 career points back-to-back um, Gatorade Players of the Year in the state uh, that he can be the guy shifting over to, like, Team United playing on uh, the EYBL circuit. He's also shown that he can fit within the team construct and, and, and score baskets and make plays as it comes to him as well. Um, you know, he, he's got, a, again, just a very high upside. He's got a basketball frame, great length. Uh, the skill sets there, the IQs there as he continues to iron out some of the handling stuff, some of the jump shot stuff. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's the, just the potential of a very, very good basketball player um, coming to the University of South Carolina who also – uh, could thrive in social settings when it comes to, you know, personality and, and winning the press conference and all that type of stuff. Jamie, let's hit on something that, you know, you kind of touched on here a minute ago, and that is now you've got several straight years where South Carolina has landed, you know, what's ended up being the top prospect in the state. You, you know, you're able to keep Gigi Jackson home. Ultimately, he's killing it in the NBA right now. Of course, Colin Murray Boyles and, and now Cam. And, this is something that Gamecock fans have been discussing for years, right? The, we all know there's tons of talent on the hardwood in the Palmetto State. Some some big-time prospects like a Gigi, like a Cam Scott. Some guys that – I mean, Wes and I will be going through the portal sometimes, Jamie, and we're like, <laughs> oh, here's another guy from South Carolina. Like, don't even know who that is, but he's a good player, you know, and now he's about to jump up a level. So – um, you know, what has Lamont and his staff, what have they done in order to kind of turn around this narrative, not not just the narrative, but literally start keeping more kids um, at home from the state? I think two things that he's done, and, and, and um, back when Lamont was first hired a couple of years ago, kind of jumped into it as well as to what he thought his process should be, and he's kind of lived up to what that is. One is I think they've done a very good job of building relationships around the state, um, build, building just, just trustworthy um, you, you know, relationships and, and all that. And I think, too, they've done a really good job of showing up and being there. Um, I, I think, you know, on the days that they're able to get out and go see players, they go to the local games. Uh, they show up at the local gyms. They make sure that the local people, are you know, are, are, are touched and, and felt like they're a priority. Um, and, and they stay the course, uh, not really putting pressure, not really applying pressure to anybody, um, but staying the course, letting you know that they're here. Um, they're bringing, you know, kids on campus. Uh, showing off a, a game day atmosphere. And I think uh, one thing, too, um, that has shown this year, uh, well, two things, really, since Lamont Paris has been there. One, Gigi Jackson is the third leading rookie scorer as the youngest player in the NBA um, this year, um, coming, you know, playing at USC under Lamont. Secondly, they won this year. You know, they, they made the run to the NCAA tournament um, and all that, too. So, you know, I, I think showing up, Building relationships sets the foundation, but I think also the success on the court, the winning, as well as what Gigi's done in the league, um, kind of shows the top level talent. Um, you know, a, a new face. Jamie, uh, w- with Cam, you know, you've talked quite a bit here while we've been sitting here about the upside, and you know, there, there'll be a few parts of his game. I'm sure that he'll continue to, to work towards, and he even talked about how Coach Paris sort of had this vision for him and and how he wants him to fit in, but also has already talked about some of the things he wants him to tweak and be working on. Obviously, if you're going to play here for Paris, you're going to have to play defense. Like That's that's kind of a non-negotiable. But what are some of the things as he tries to reach that upside? And I think some of it would just be getting in the strength conditioning program, maybe adding some strength and stuff like that. But in your eyes, what are the things that this staff will be focused on with Cam in the next year or so in order for him to try to reach that potential? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with first and foremost, you know, as with most any 17, 18 year old kid going into a college program, getting up to the speed of the game. A lot of that comes with um, getting your strength and conditioning together, building your base, building your core um, and and getting just stronger. Um, Also to learning the defensive principles as you hit on as well. Um, you know, the rotations, learning the footwork and angles and all that type of stuff with that. Uh, when it comes to his overall game, I think tightening his handle, being able to create uh, more opportunities, getting to his spots off the bounce, um, developing some counters off of the initial um, attack as well, uh, something that he'll continue to tighten. And then the three-point jump shot, uh, you know, getting that down to a, 
you know, 38, 40% type of shot um, will be big in his, uh, you know, next developments. Jamie, uh, and I hesitate to say look, look ahead because, I mean, nowadays, man, you're you're really looking into the future now because of the transfer portal, right? The way you can improve your team. Uh, Lamont Paris and his staff, of course, did an outstanding job in the last recruiting cycle bringing in impact transfers. And some of those guys are back. Some of those guys are, are now gone. Um, you know, you look at mainly – right, B.J. Mack and Talon Cooper, who came in from the transfer class. These guys are so unique. They're kind of hard to replace. But I think now that Cam's in the fold, you know who's returning. Um, you know some of the guys that are in the fold. You can start to visualize this Gamecocks roster for next year. Let's look in the portal now. Um, there are some interesting players that are in. Some guys that South Carolina, you know, will be in on or that they are in on. You know, Nick Pringle from Alabama just jumped in late last night. Dakota LaFue from Mount St. Mary's, the guards. What do you see as the priorities for South Carolina? And then how do you see maybe all those pieces fitting with Cam in year one and the other guys on the roster too? Um, well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Dakota LaFue is a, a guard, kind of a combo guard that can uh, create some opportunity um, and has a, a smooth floor game. And then Cam Pringle is a big. Um, I, I think both of those positions – um, are, are, are what South Carolina will, will try to hit on uh, in the portal. Uh, they, they have a good baseline of guys coming back um, between Zach Davis. You know, you got uh, Morris Ugas, you got uh, Jacoby Wright, um, you got Studi. Um, you know, you have a good baseline. Colin Mori Boyles, obviously, you have a good baseline of guys coming back. So you kind of have a floor as to what you know you can be. Now it's time to kind of add the, add the sprinkles and the frosting on top of it. Um, and, you know, and, and have another team that can compete um, in the SEC. But I think that they feel that they can do that attacking, you know, getting at least another guard um, in there and then getting an, a, at least another big um, that can go and take the battles of um, what the SEC brings. Jamie, last one I got for you, man. While we have you, um, you, you mentioned Colin. Let, let's talk about CMB for a second. What uh, what did you see – and, you know, kind of in your words and your eyes from him this past year as a freshman, what, what's maybe the next step for him on the court? I, I think we were all just kind of amazed at the impact he was able to make. Were, were you at all surprised at how quickly he made the impact and what's kind of the next step for him, man? Well, it was kind of an unknown. Um, the year that he had last year at Wasatch Academy playing on the, um, I guess it was the NIBC then, now it's the Nike EYBL Scholastic. Um, you know, it's one of the toughest conferences in the country. Uh, he was wildly productive throughout uh, that entire season. So the production wasn't necessarily, but it was kind of, you know, it was unknown because of, you know, getting mono. Uh, the sickness that he had to start the year off, missed the last part of camp and then the first part of the season and all that type of stuff. And you never know how quickly you can come back from that, getting up to the speed, obviously, is, you know, freshmen go through that anyway. So it was – very impressive what he was able to string together, especially once he started to get his strength back and into the starting lineup. Um, he has a huge sense for basketball, high basketball IQ, always seems to be around the ball and in position to make a play, uh, whether it be a rebound, whether it be extending a possession, uh, whether it be making a shot around the rim. I think the next step for him will be extending his range out a little bit. A lot of the stuff comes 10 feet in from the basket, uh, finishing at, at awkward angles. Um, and, and all that, I think it's extending um, his range out, becoming a threat from at least uh, the free throw line extended out to possibly the three um, and developing the handle a little bit, being able to create an opportunity to get the ball at the top of the key, uh, get downhill, especially going right uh, to the right um, and, and finishing um, a play. But his, um, <clears throat> no, his, his season uh, is what you would expect given his senior year of high school. However, the unknown came from the fact of, of you know, missing all that time uh, with, you know, being sick and all that type of stuff, and especially a sick that takes away a ton of strength from you um, and all that, and kind of having to rebuild and regroup from there. Um, but an uber-talented player based strictly on the feel that he has for basketball. Jamie, uh, great stuff as always, man. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time and uh, also appreciate all the coverage on, on Cam Scott leading up to it, man. Great stuff. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Chris and Wes, thank you all so much. Yeah, man. Have a good one. That's Jamie Shaw hey, on three. Check out his work on the on three network covering, of course, basketball recruiting. There's some South Carolina basketball recruiting in there, but obviously mostly from a national standpoint as well. Did a great job. Broke the news last week on the uh, release from the NIL 
for Cam Scott. So awesome stuff there from Jamie. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Jamie5. Um, all right, Chris. So you and I didn't talk a ton about the commitment ourselves. And, dude, just, just the reaction from South Carolina fans this morning and seeing the news, it was kind of one of those things, man. Everybody was anticipating it, I think, by the time it happened. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't a shock. It wasn't a surprise necessarily. But they were waiting on it to be official, and it's one of those things. I feel like it was such a big deal. A lot of fans were not going to believe it, you know, until they actually heard it. Like, until they saw it, they saw, hey, Cam, I'm Cam Scott, and I'm committed to South Carolina. And, uh, you know, just such a huge moment for this program. Reminded me a little bit. Obviously, there was some GG in there. Um, there was some – obviously, I remember when B.J. Matt committed last year, and there was kind of like that anticipation that there was some big news coming, and then he committed and everybody celebrated. It, it felt kind of like that too. But uh, what did you think of just the, the reaction from Game Cognition? Yeah, and and by the way, Cam, Cam during his announcement, man, I love he, – he basically like – I think they might have run into some traffic going down to the station at the game. So Bill's on there. Bill Gunner's on there this morning on the early game like, yeah, they're on Bull Street, like, and obviously we didn't know it's Cam, or we knew, but the public didn't know at that time. And Cam just walks in there and just does the announcement. Like, there's no, not much fanfare. They didn't draw it out. He just goes in there and does it. And and I was impressed too, Wes. You had said this beforehand. You know, really good communicator. Was impressed with him. You know, during during the interview and and just the way that he was able to to say all that. But yeah, it, going back to the fan base to actually answer your question, man. I mean, people are are thrilled right now. And I think there's so many reasons for it, right? Like, what the team did last season was obviously outstanding. Um, getting back to the tournament in year two, like, you're ahead of schedule. Um, landing another big-time prospect like Cam Scott, knowing that you've got some pieces coming back, right, like CMB and some other guys, Jacoby Wright, Miles Studi, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then kind of this progression that we've seen that we just talked to Jamie about landing in-state talent. I mean, it, it has been such a sore subject, rightfully so in a lot of cases, Wes, for the Gamecock fan base. Um, they wanted to see that, and, and they're starting to see that. I actually, uh, Kev Roche, our buddy, Wes, on, on Twitter today, he said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, but, like, you have to be happy if you're a Gamecock fan with how this basketball program is progressing, like it has to be it, it all, not only that, but it has to be better than what you thought it was going to be after two years. There can't be a Gamecock fan out there going, ah, man, we're just, Ooh, we're still behind schedule here. No, like you are by any, I don't think it's even subjective. Like you were ahead of schedule here. You've already been back to the tournament. You're already recruiting like South Carolina's recruiting. Um, Lamont's got a system that he's put in place to where you just get the sense, man, that there's some sustainability to this thing. And it's not just a one year type of thing because of, you know, how they've been able to recruit the system that they've put in, the buy in that they've got from their team and and from the fan base as well. Well, and, and how much is how, how important is getting a Cam Scott? Um to 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 that very thing, you know, have, having the ability to kind of continue it moving forward, to continue this momentum, it would be easy for this to be kind of touted as like a, uh, they call it lightning in a bottle, but then Michi's out, BJ's out, Talon's out, obviously those last two because of just being out of eligibility. And, yeah, you know, it's going to be very hard for them to, to do that again this year. And now you go out. We'll see what else they do in the portal, but I think that actually sets up pretty well for them. You go out and get the number one player in the state. And, again, I said it earlier, the consensus number one player in the state, it, it seems like with these upper echelon guys, yes, there is still a a range in what he's going to be as a college player and then potentially as an NBA player. You know, we'll see how he develops. How does he adjust? How does – you know, that's a, there's questions for every single guy that goes from high school to college and then college to – whatever pro, um, whatever sport they're they're going to, you know, whether it's NBA, NFL, MLB, whatever. However, most of the time it seems like when when everybody kind of agrees and there's a complete 
um, alignment within the industry right down to like the overall, the positional ranking and the state ranking on who he is as a player. And it's like right around that top 35 overall. It's right around that seven or eight as a shooting guard. And then it's top player in the state of South Carolina. So uh, for, for him to be that, I think speaks to, he has a high school resume that, uh, you know, Jamie, I liked how he said it. Basically, he he's excelled at every spot he's been. And for these basketball heads, that basically means like, you know, he's been to this, he's been to this camp, he's been to this tournament, he's been at this event, and every single time he finds a way to show out. If you just look at this kid's high school resume, Chris, I mean, he's been playing since he was in like seventh or eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. Got moved up to, to varsity ball. He's a, I, I assume this is right. Cause I said it, this was what I heard. He's a five time all state selection in high school. He's two times South Carolina Gatorade player of the year. And he has 2,475 career points during his career at Lexington. This past season, he averaged 22.6 points, four rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 3.3 steals per game. Of course, leading Lexington to a state championship. I mean, the resume over a long period of time is undeniable with this kid. And not, not that that always translates directly to college, but just in terms of doing it, on many stages over a long period of time, this is not a gimmick. This is not a flash in the pan for him. Yeah, I, I like the way you put it. Not not a flash in the pan. And, and you know, you look at Cam, and I think one of the reasons that he's ranked so highly, Wes, he would deserve it because of what he's done, like the production Jamie Shaw pointed out there. In addition to those things he's done at the high school level, like playing EYBL, he, he's done the same thing, you know, playing travel ball. Um, he's been productive at every level every single year. And and the results speak for themselves, as you just laid out. But not only is the production there, but you look at him just in terms of his skill set and his body type and the parts of his game that actually are not fully developed, but that we've seen glimpses of and we've seen that the ability is there to continue to develop those parts. That gives him even more value and even more upside. Um, so you combine those two pieces and that that's what you get. You get a guy who's ranked, you know, top 30, top 40, pretty much on a, in a consensus fashion. You know, he's got size, super smooth. Like I was telling you yesterday, cause we were talking about, you know, how smooth he is. Like he just kind of, he just kind of makes it look effortless. Like when he jumps, he just kind of appears at the rim. Like there he is. Um, the three point shot, as you and Jamie both pointed out, not even fully developed, but he has a nice looking shot and he can make it. He, he's got range. That, so that's not a missing component. That's just a part that can get even better at the college level. And then, you know, the typical things, adding weight, learning how to play defense at the college level in a college system. That's going to be something that Lamont Paris is going to demand a good bit of his players as far as playing defense. That's something he'll have to get better at, too. Uh, but you, you don't look at him and go, ah, athletically, can he play defense? <laughs> or d does he have the ability to continue developing a three-point shot? He checks all those boxes. And one thing we've seen from Lamont Paris and his staff, Wes, they've done a really good job developing guys, too, and improving them from year to year. And I would expect Cam Scott to, to be the same. For sure, man. And I, I think uh, – I, I like – and this is why we had Jamie on, because he can add that additional insight. I liked what he said about Cam is willing to be the guy, but also is willing and able to fall into a role as well when that's what's needed for the team. And we, we all know, for one, this is going to be a team-based – this is team-based basketball at South Carolina. It's not uh, everybody just gets out of the way and isolate one player and, and you go do everything. It's going to be team-based defense and it's going to be team-based offense. And – so you, there has to be a little bit of willingness to buy into that, I think. A lot of willingness to buy into that, I think. And so to hear that, I, I think, is another good sign. But like like we were talking about, dynamic player, but also dynamic personality, dynamic kid, um, can probably do pretty well for himself. For You know, forget even what you get just from like a kind of in-house or, or collective um, 
type thing, probably being a local kid can do very, very well with some brand deal side of things on that NIL space as well. So I think that's something if I'm him, I'm uh, I'm keeping basketball first and foremost, obviously, but there could be some real opportunities for him throughout the Columbia area, I would think. Um, speaking of a great company that we get to work with here in the Columbia area and uh, someone that I tell you, if you haven't done your taxes yet at Ooh. this point, mm. first of all, you should have some tax anxiety. We always tell you not to have tax anxiety. <laughs> if you haven't done your taxes no. yet, you should have some tax anxiety. But you should. But we we can we can cure that. That that statement has not been evaluated by the FDA, but we can we can cure this. 803-462-5576. Liberty Tax, our friends will take care of you. And there are always some things, because here's the thing. Yes, the IRS says you have that deadline, right? But they still want their money. So they're, they're going to work with you in order to, to get that money. But you're you're going to want to handle that as quickly and a, as efficiently as possible. And the way the way to do that is to, to call our friends at Liberty Tax because they've seen every single situation you can imagine. And uh, th they're going to help you through this. So either A, you, you need to call them because you haven't done your taxes, or maybe B, your taxes were just a mess this year because you didn't call them and you need to plan better for next year. Go ahead, call them, and go ahead and kind of set some stuff up and get that rolling for next tax season. But, of course, shout out to our friends at Liberty Tax for always supporting the show here on GC Live. Any other basketball thoughts you have, Chris, before we hit on a couple of little spring football and recruiting thoughts. Yeah, real quick, just going back to the portal, and I asked Jamie about this, you, you kind of see what South Carolina needs now in the portal. And um, the priorities are going to be a guard and a big man, you know. And the two names that were mentioned earlier here on, on the show uh, by me and by Jamie are, are two guys to watch for, not the only two by any means, but – Look at Dakota LaFue from Mount St. Mary's. He's a point guard who can shoot, who has some athletic ability. He's a guy to watch. Um, and then Nick Pringle, who is a Seabrook native, Wes, who played at Walford and then played at Alabama this past year um, and has a lot of athletic upside. Um, not even upside. Like, he's he's just a good athlete. Um, saw him described on the Insiders Forum today as a rim runner. I like that. I mean, this is a guy that, like athletic big man who can defend, who can play above the rim, block shots, finish. Y you got to like that, the idea of that, you know. And so him being a South Carolina native and him fitting that profile, him commenting, Wes, on the Cam Scott announcement. Ah, ah, eyeball emoji. Um, so that's a name also to watch. And you can you can kind of start seeing this take shape, right? It, it's, so, it's so hard in the transfer portal era to not get ahead of yourself. Let, let's see what happens, you know, with the guard situation, and let's see if they could, you know, maybe could they get Nick Pringle in the fold. But if they could, you can start visualizing, okay, Talon Cooper, very hard to replace. Same thing with B.J. Mack. But could CMB start taking more outside shots let, next year like we know he can? Can you add Nick Pringle in there? And now you've got CMB, Pringle, Josh Gray as kind of your trio inside. You start thinking about that, and it's hard not to get excited. So we'll we'll see where the portal goes, but the activity for basketball on the recruiting front not not finished yet, Wes. I don't think. Yeah, but I'm I, unlike Chris. I'm going to completely give you all permission to get ahead of yourselves. Like start <laughs> uh, start go. getting excited, get ahead of yourselves. Um, you know, and I, I tend to think it, it, it's kind of interesting because I, I don't necessarily feel like this staff in the portal, they don't – I don't believe they try to cast an incredibly wide net. I, I think what they're trying to do is focus in, all right, we we love these players and their fit. Let, let's go try to get them. And, and it's, you're not going to get them all, obviously. But I, I think they've done a pretty good job of hitting on the guys that they have gotten on campus. You know, um, Dakota LaFue, I, I think that's a guy they, they should get on campus that I, I think there's enough mutual interest there for them to get him in. And 
Now, I've, I've also, I've seen one of our subscribers who pays very close attention to basketball says he has a former coach at Syracuse. And then um, also the, the kid's from Georgia. And that that's a school that is in his top six, in his final six. And I was told, hey, watch out for Georgia here, that I, I think that's kind of where South Carolina's head may be and that that may be the, the school to beat or the school that poses the biggest threat. Now, if you're South Carolina, you all of a sudden, Chris, you do have a pretty good story to sell to this kid. Not only are you replacing Talon Cooper, but, hey, the, the pieces of the puzzle are being put in place. There's only a couple of little spots that are left. Why don't you come in and, and run this whole thing for us? And I um, I, I think he fits in terms of size. He, now, he's listed as more of a combo guard, whereas I think South Carolina, you know, look at how much Talon handled the basketball last yep. year. You're going to need a guy you can trust to – to come in and, and handle the, the ball and kind of run everything. But I, I don't think they would be after Dakota LaFue if they didn't see that skill set, um, you know, see that among his skill set, I, I should say. So are there other guys that they're recruiting? Yes. Um, are there other guys that will pop up? Maybe, may, maybe not. If they, if they hit on those two, it certainly feels like right now those two, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, um, Plus the Wisconsin guard transfer mm -hmm. are probably the the ones to keep the closest eye on at this given time. So, but hey, it's it's fun to be talking about men's basketball and there to be some some weight to it, some excitement to it, Chris. Yeah, for sure. I mean, c c because you're coming off of, you know you're coming off of a year where you had you staged this dramatic turnaround. You got back to the tournament, which everyone was itching to do, but you can also see to, to go back to what I said earlier, Wes, like you see that there's room to continue going up. Yeah. You, you had tons of experience on last year's team and you had some key pieces on that team that will not be back, but you have some that will be back. You have guys that can continue getting better. Namely, I mean, CMB is probably your starting point, right? Because he was a freshman. And then you can see adding in, more young players to that mix, and then some transfers that if you bring in the guys that you might have the ability to bring in, that you have a chance to bring in, rather, you'll be adding more experience and, and some different skill sets. So will be, I think, very interesting to see who they can bring in and very exciting, too. A lot of excitement around men's and women's hoops and around basketball, which is which is really awesome because on the men's side, you know, that's been missing here in Columbia for a while. And to get back to it has been fun. Certainly, Wes, we have seen that in terms of the amount of people that consume basketball content here on the show or on the on the game, on our show, or on Gamecock Central. There's been um, an appetite for that. So that's been cool to see. Absolutely, man. So, all right, let's, uh, let's talk a little football. Then we're going to get out of here um, on a day that uh, per – perfect timing by Cam, though, to – to commit today, not a whole lot else going on in, in Gamecock Nation. So it, it got, I think, the proper spotlight, which was very, very cool. Spring game coming up on Saturday. I don't know, may, maybe Cam Scott will be uh, hanging out at Williams Bryce on Saturday. I, I would not be shocked to see our guy show up over there and um, be among the fans. But Chris, again, spring game Saturday night, Williams Bryce Stadium. Uh, Beamer said, We're going to have a, a lot of guys here. In terms of recruits, we've already posted a uh, preliminary list of prospects that are expected in town. That thing is getting longer and longer with, with top guys. You're Ooh. starting to see some momentum build on the recruiting side for the high school side. Of course, the portal is open. We didn't do a show on Monday, so we haven't really talked about that either. And so let, let's keep it right. Let's go recruiting, man, because I, I think we got some meat on the bone here for one. By the time, unless you're listening to us absolutely live right now, watching, which we appreciate, if you're listening or watching this later, by the time you do, Ryan Montgomery will probably be officially off the board for not South Carolina, basically, uh, for Georgia, it's expected. And so that is obviously a little bit of an issue. You always want a quarterback in each class, but I do think that the, the approach at that position is a little bit different in today's era compared to when you just knew you had to sign a high school quarterback every cycle. 
Yeah, it is different. That's a good point because you felt like, okay, we got to sign one. So, some years you might sign two, Wes. And you always went into it going, you remember quarterback transfers were always the more um, in the last several years before the transfer portal kind of NIL era that we've been in for, what, two going on three years now. Quarterback, that was the position that you looked at the most for transfers because there's one ball, you know. <laughs> it's not like playing O-line or something. There's one ball. And most of the time, there's some quarterbacks that can go play another position. They can go play receiver or DB or something like that. Most of them play quarterback, and that is what they play. And so if they don't see that opportunity to play either that season or in the near future, they move on. You know, and so obviously that's continued and that's even probably increased in the transfer portal era, but the player movement in general has obviously gone up tremendously in the era of the free transfer. But now coaches can structure it differently because if you miss on a quarterback, you don't feel like you have to go reach in high school. You know, now now South Carolina may go out and say, hey, we really like quarterback A from the 2025 class. We went and saw him this spring. We saw him in camp this summer. We saw him uh, play during his senior season, and they may go pursue somebody and, and really, really like him and, and go offer somebody. Point is, you don't feel like you have to because now you can just reach into the transfer portal if you need to and find somebody. We saw that this offseason. South Carolina, pretty resourceful in that regard, bringing in Robbie Ashford as a guy with SEC starting experience and then bringing in Davis Bevel as a preferred walk-on as a guy who has experience at a couple of power five schools and has started games in the past as well. So um, not to say they won't try to go find one in 2025, obviously recruiting that position is still incredibly important, um, but you can just do it a little bit differently now. Yeah. And I think um, will, will the North sellers end up being the guy that, that we think he could be. Will he be the guy that the staff sort of has pointed to him, hopefully being, I, I think that's part of this equation, but also, I think we would have seen South Carolina, to be quite frank, they would have been involved with different guys, with different quarterbacks, frankly, if they were out there looking for a starter. And it would be a nope. little bit different situation. So, uh, you know, if you zoom forward a few years from now, if it's time to be looking for a starter, you're, you know, you have something different to sell is what I'm trying to say. And so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I tell you, man. If I was them, I might take another hard look at Cutter Woods, in-state kid who uh, is talented. Now he's committed to Wake Forest, but, I mean, hey, Wake Wake Forest has done pretty well in the Carolinas finding quarterbacks, right? Absolutely. Sam uh, Hartman. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's another Hartman situation. They they have a little bit of a unique scheme. They do things their own way. Um Obviously, you're not talking about playing SEC defenses every week, but uh, wait, I, I think Cutter Woods will be good at, at Wake Forest. And we, we've we seen, I mean, look at Duke and um, them coming down and, and uh, getting the kid out of Gaffney last year. So there, there's been some kind of under-the-radar-ish quarterbacks in our state that have gone on to other places. And um, I, I think that if you look at the job that um, – some of those schools have done. I, I mean, Wake Forest, they they put together a pretty good offense. And I, I, I don't know. We'll see. It may, it may be too late. I don't know. But that would be a guy, Chris, I would look for in-state if I was thinking about going high school for, for this I, for this cycle. Maybe they go, go that direction. We will certainly see. Um, otherwise, like we talked about, big list of guys coming in. You can read that on Gamecock Central. And – one of the more intriguing guys that um, I, I think will actually be there on Saturday, Chris, but um, what I do know is he'll be committing on Sunday, and that would be Kendall Daniels, consensus four-star prospect from uh, Maury in Norfolk, Virginia, a, a guy that we've uh, quickly sort of realized we need to talk about a little bit more because uh, it seems like the Gamecocks are in pretty good shape here. Yeah, another big defensive back, Wes. You know, you've got Demarcus Leach committed in this class as a six-three player with the frame to continue to grow. Looks like a true safety, and Kendall Daniels is a safety nickel type. 
from a, the same high school program that produced Fred J.R. Johnson, a four-star linebacker from the 2024 recruiting class who Wes has every appearance of being a guy who's going to factor in at, at linebacker as a true freshman. The returns on him have been very good. Maury's a great program. They, uh, Coach McCain there does a great job. They whew, they, run, they ran roughshod over everybody last year, really. They uh, won a state title. They didn't lose a game, and most of them they won by lots and lots of points. And they're loaded with talent, too. J.R. Johnson was on that team. Uh, Ari Watford, who's committed to Clemson as an edge in the 2025 class. Kendall Daniels. Plenty, plenty of other guys, of course, I'm sure I'm leaving out. But, man, um, Daniels is a guy that I know we saw him on campus last summer for South Carolina, kind of milling around on an unofficial visit during camp, talking mm-hmm. to T. Gray. And they've just done a good job of continuing to work him. Another guy who's six foot three, who brings size to the position, as well as some athleticism. And um, Carolina made his top six a while back. And they've, they've continued doing good work there and seem to be in a good spot. Yeah, our guy Travis asked, uh, is Carolina interested in LeBron Bond from Maury? I have not heard that name. Maybe you have, Chris, in terms of South Carolina interest. And uh, he also asked, are we still in it with Jalen Gilchrist? Yes. Um, I- I'll check in on that. But I-, I think South Carolina has probably actually been the leader for Jalen probably for months. There's been a lot of buzz there. Um, you know, I haven't heard that to the extent of like, hey, he's definitely going to South Carolina. But in terms of a school, he's been very high on and um, really has just been probably, I don't know, it feels like 10 times. When, when, when Carolina, you can follow the visits a lot of times, man. Now, Daniels is not one of those kids, unless we just weren't picking up on it. Daniels not one of those guys. I don't think that's just been to campus 100 times, but. Some of these guys, you can just sort of follow the visits and it, it tells the story that, that South Carolina is in a, a good spot with them and that ends up being the case with, with the commitment. So we'll see. I, I think they're in good shape with Daniels for Sunday. And with the number of guys who are on campus this weekend, dude, you, you never know. You could see a guy or two decide to go ahead and end the process. Of course, many of these guys will – many of the same players, Chris, will be back on campus this summer their official visits as well and you even have an official visit this weekend and david sanders big time top 10 overall five-star offensive tackle in the class yeah that'll be a big one and man this visitor list wes is is pretty impressive um by the way the about the lebron bond question um i have not heard him come up um don't South Carolina does not have an offer out to, to my knowledge. I'm sure they know about him because they recruit that school pretty thoroughly um, and have good relationships there. He's actually been committed to Indiana. That's where he's committed now, but I haven't heard him come up in terms of South Carolina showing interest there, but a, a good, a good player at that level, uh, but an impressive list Wes. And, you know, I think for Sanders, the five-star offensive lineman from Charlotte, you know, to be realistic, I think South, South Carolina is behind some others here. Frankly, uh, they offered very early. He's been to campus numerous times, but I think some others are ahead. So the question is, can you make a can you make a move here? You know, he's going to take some other summer official visits. Clemson's in the mix, Tennessee, Georgia, some others. You know, can they make a move this weekend? W- we'll see. But this is a pretty big time group of visitors. I think South Carolina has benefited by the fact that a lot of their competitors have already had their spring games. So that lessens your competition. Um, but they've done a good job of getting guys on campus too. And this may be an event that can give them some momentum into the summer when camps start and official visits start as well. By the way, hey, Wes, do we have um, – we'll just do this on the fly because this is a live show. Do we still have our little promo that we can give the people? We do. We we have do. Our, do we have our we YouTube do. only? Let me, let me put this up if you don't mind. It, shameless plug, honestly. But, man, it is – it's a really awesome time if you're not on Gamecock Central to join. We got that visitors list, of course, and it's pretty long. But also, hoops transfer portal, football transfer portal, recruiting, baseball. I mean, there's a lot going on. So, $1 for two months, code SCAR1, S-C-A-R-1, at GamecockCentral.com. That'll get you, for $1, you can get two months, and you can decide from there. If you want to stay with us or not, we hope so. But pretty good deal, I think, Wes. So 
hit it if you haven't already. We would appreciate it. Yeah, I just threw that in the chat. Uh, hopefully that pops up there for y'all. Uh, that's the visitors list. Um, most most of y'all, I think, are subscribers anyway, but I know we got some folks who aren't. So uh, check that out. Come on over. Hang out with us. You can um, ask Chris questions at all times of the day and night on the Welcome. Ask Chris thread. And, um, yeah, we got a lot going on. So uh, we'll, 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 of course, have complete covers throughout the weekend as far as the um, – the other recruiting sort of feedback and which these guys make it in who are expected in. I mean, the, uh, let, let, let's hold on, Chris. Let me pull this thing back up. I'm, I'm going to throw everybody a bone. I'm going to talk about a couple other guys. Let's do it. So who do we want to talk about? I'll tell you a guy I think quickly needs to be someone we talk about, which Gamecock fans are familiar, but maybe haven't, heard about him as much Shedrick Surratt from Gaffney good one just moved up to four stars on on three which actually boosted him to being four stars on the on three industry ranking as well someone so as many of you know we had Charles Power on last week and we were talking about some 2026s and so after we got off air that I think it was the next day Charles texts me. He's like, hey, I I just went through some more film on that Surratt kid. He's like, I wish I'd done that before I came on the show. I really like him. And then we got to going back and forth. He's like, can you get me some more updated measurables on the kid? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll ask around. I'll try to get that for you. So I got him that. Boom. Next thing I know, he's dove into the film and the kid's a four star. And Surratt's going to be back on campus this weekend. And I think is once again kind of fitting that trend we've seen in state guys, especially with offensive linemen, man. How many of these dudes do they get on campus all the time? And it's just ri they get so familiar with the program that it's hard for other schools to come in and beat them. And they were able to get in on him early. The, the, the offer list is starting to grow for Surratt. But South Carolina's done such a good job early on, it makes it difficult on these other schools to come in. So I I would probably lean towards him ultimately being in this South Carolina class. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of buzz for South Carolina with this one, Wes. And and now this is before the offer list grew, but I heard, you know, maybe a few weeks ago that ultimately the Gamecocks were going to be pretty hard to beat here. So so co-sign on that. And look, man, I mean, whew, nowadays, if you're a South Carolina fan, if there's a guy that the Gamecocks have committed or have a chance to get and he gets the old Charles Power stamp of approval, that's something to get excited about um, because he he does such a great job with data and, and evaluations and all those things that my ears definitely perk up when I when I hear him talk about how how much he likes Shed Surratt. So you're right. He, he's an in-state guy. But yet he's kind of flown under the radar somehow. Plays for a great program, you know. So not really sure how that happens, but nonetheless, a guy that everyone needs to know about. Yeah, I just I think he's emerging. I think it took a little bit of time, but the uh, it has definitely happened. And again, we we could take a whole show to go through all the guys on this list. Um, there is, I'll say this: there is at least one five star linebacker on this list as well. So Woo. I. Uh, uh, I think this could be a, a big weekend for South Carolina, both in terms of just, I would say in terms of just setting the stage for Carolina moving forward and moving into that next window, which you have kind of that late April, May period where the coaches will be on the road and will be doing evaluations for spring practices of these prospects. And then what is, will be a huge June for the Gamecocks with many of these guys on campus for official visits. Uh, the game itself, we we may – I know Mike will have his show tomorrow more than likely. We may have one more previewing the game itself. But, Chris, anything you are most looking forward to seeing in the spring game on Saturday? Oh, I can come up with several. Um, to try to narrow it down, I'm going to do what probably most people listening would do and say, I want to see how the North Sellers throws the football around, right? You want to see that? Um, 
the the run game, the new additions in the run game, right? Well, really all, you know, Braswell, we know Rocket won't play, right? But Braswell, Jawan Howell, Oscar Attaway, um, the receivers, you know, who, who's emerging? We, we've heard really good things about Gage Larvidan and uh, and Jerry Brown. Those guys have been out of the – like, those have seemed to generate some buzz, right, Wes? And so I want to see how those guys look or anybody else. How do they look out there? And then the lines of scrimmage, you know, the defensive line and offensive line both are units that needed to take big steps forward this season. So, you know, we know they'll be mixing and matching on these teams, but they're going to try to make it pretty even. And so what does the what does that look like? And how do we kind of assess those two lines of scrimmages coming out? Those will be the biggest ones. I, I know that's a lot. Chris is doing that thing that, that Beamer does where he gives you his <laughs> answer, but then it ends up being everybody. Yeah, I'm not no, I'm not gonna say everybody because I could keep going. Well, I want to see the other corner spot. I want to see the linebackers, but like I think I gave like four, right? So um th- those would be the the main ones for me. If if you're gonna give me just one, like if you said you've got to name just one, for me it's gonna be the receivers. Because I feel like I have a little bit more of a handle on sellers and what he can do. And the running backs, because there's even some film on the transfer running backs from what they've done in the past. So I, I think receivers may be the most unknown commodity, and that's the thing I would narrow it down to. Yeah, I feel like you almost have to. So um, when, when Kendall Smith and I were doing the the pregame stuff uh, two years ago, and we were just talking about player to watch or, or who's the player that has to have a big game or who's your MVP pick, we were like, you can't say Spencer Rattler. Like, you you can't say the quarterback, basically. Who other than Spencer would you pick on offense? I feel like for this question, you almost have to be, like, other than Lenoris. Like, I, I think pretty much – I think 90% of the fan base would say, I want to see Lenoris's progress. I want to see what yeah. he does. So, that's probably my real answer. But if you can't say Lenoris, I, I, I'm with you on receivers. I, I want to – I'm curious to see Jared Brown. Just because I feel like it was a little bit quieter for him early on, but then as we've gotten into scrimmage time, it's like two scrimmages in a row. You hear Beamer says, "Hey, Mazio Bennett and Jared Brown had big days," and then you see the video that South Carolina puts out, and it's Jared Brown making a big catch downfield. And I'm almost wondering: Is Jared Brown? We probably don't have enough evidence of this yet. But it's Jared Brown, one of those gamers that Beamer was talking about. And so I, I could see this being a good setting for him. So, Jared Brown, I'm, I'm just going to do what you did and, and list uh, multiple people. But I, uh, I I tell you, I think depending on the O-line in front of them, I think Sellers could be MVP of the game. I think a Jawarn Howell could have a big day because he's just – He's high enough on the depth chart that he's obviously very talented, but he's low enough that he's going to get to play a lot. Yeah. Like, I don't know if Attaway, they're not going to give him 25 carries in this game. You know? Mm-hmm. Now, Howell's is still a younger guy. He, he's still a bit raw. He's, reps are, are very valuable for him at this point. I, I think your DJ Braswell's, your Jawarn Howell's are guys that, We'll probably get a lot of reps. We'll probably get some opportunities. We know Carolina uh, has been working on the running game quite a bit this offseason. Those are a couple of guys I want to see, but also I think can maybe have a, a big day on Saturday as well in terms of creating some plays and uh, having some yardage by their name. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. You know, Attaway so experienced and is in a new offense, so it's not like you don't kind of just shelve him. All right, Oscar doesn't need to play. It's not It's not like that. But when you're looking at rep distribution, you know, the spring game, a lot of times, Wes, especially when you're in, you know, the second half, that's young guys. You know, that's guys that maybe are second, third string or and or guys that are younger, you know. And so that, I, I agree with you. I think we're going to see a good bit of Jawarn Howell and Braswell as well, which I'm, which I'm excited to see because Braswell – He might be a guy flying under the radar a little bit just with some of the acquisitions that South Carolina made. Three guys out of the transfer portal kind of forget about Braswell a little bit sometimes, and 
um, he, he has some physical ability as well that I'll be interested to see. Yeah, he, he does. And as much as I talked him up last year, um, I, I can't just jump off the bandwagon at this point. So I, I, I need him to have a big Saturday, I, I feel like. And if he does, you, you really have some depth there at that running back position once you get Rocket back in there and back healthy. Shout out to our guy Tyler from Gaffney. Him, he's weighing in, uh, saying big time athlete at offensive line is Shed Surratt. So, all right, y'all, that's going to do it for us. We're going to get on out of here. But uh, like I said, be on the lookout. There will be some more GC Live shows as the week progresses as we roll into spring football, uh, spring game on Saturday, Garnet Black spring game, Saturday night. For Chris, I'm Wes. Appreciate y'all joining in. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Cam Scott day. It's been GC Live. Y'all have a good one.